I am going to read some parts from Beauty Talking Monsters by Masha Tupiston. Masha Tupiston. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I probably thrashed that. I'm actually not done reading this. I've been really busy the past couple weeks and I've been reading it for the past couple weeks. And uh, I feel like I just don't want it to end too. So I've been avoiding finishing it, going back to a lot of my favorite parts. Um, well, it's about, it's like a bunch of short stories, kind of. I think they're short stories. I can't really tell. But um, she relates a lot of things to movies a lot of horror movies and she's just pissed about a lot of things and it's it's so fucking good but I'm, I'm gonna read a couple of the parts that I really liked all right he looks so inviting and so is this perfect town which makes me feel at home when he doesn't it's why I keep going there I stare through his windows even when the lights are off and the place is particularly cold or I dream this a house of horrors a house in a horror movie but a house nonetheless and I go up the stairs or down them, or he goes up and down me. We're always sitting on stairs together. We'll later do this for real, and we'll do it when I dream years after that. I imagine that he has his own place to live in town somewhere, and that's he's all by himself. A top-year-old boy lives on his own like Jim and J.G. Ballard, Ballard's Empire of the Sun. He invites me over, and we are children playing out of adult plots. I'm turned on by the idea that he will let me in perfectly. I dream his suffering stops as soon as I show up. Most of what I say on our date... And I say a lot of different reasons. Goes unregistered by him. He's not trying at all. And I don't know if that's a personal quality of his or a quality that boys take on with girls. How could I be more interesting? I want to make any difference to him? To me? He has so many versions of earth tones. I mistake him for some beautiful rust-tailed fox. Oh, those eyes. Oh, mine. Maybe he's fire. I can toss log in into or wrap around myself with a coat. I believe early on that love gives me something that sharpens who I am. But people are such wimps when it comes to desire. It makes love really complicated. He doesn't do anything that's surprising or fun. He never stops to look at me. Our walk is always side by side. Neither of us ever turns around. Does he say anything? He never asks to go swimming with me. He never asks me anything. So I ask him, do you swim? And he just says, yeah. I, want to I wanted him to say how and why and where. I can describe what he does in the water, but he doesn't. I'm tossing bones and he ignores them. The way he swims around is so mandatory and routine. I forget all about it. I give up. All I know is that he knows how. So what? Later, I learned that so many brilliant men are still such dicks to women. So if it's not being smart that frees you, what frees you? In the tiny note that comes with the myth of Cupid and Psyche, in the golden ass, it says, the writer is entertained by what he writes. He believes none of it. After we say goodbye, I make plans to meet sometime. Maybe even the next day. He walks away with his fat father in a dark summer sweater. I want to be in. And into one of those movies that's playing. I want to follow him in. Already an obsessive, unsatisfied with the cliffhangers of fragments, the kind of Roland Barthes says you historically get when it comes to love narratives. What would finishing something look like? He's either in Dirty Dancing or Jean de Flore. I tell Chloe and my mother, like a detective, I think I have to be one. I think it's because I know that when it comes to really intense feelings of interest, Girls have to keep their feelings all plugged up like a tampon in their cunt, pretending they don't have them, and leave the real desiring to boys. Any fuck-ups count so much more with girls. They're rarely allowed to recover or move beyond their recovery. Besides, I lament, the available part of history historically the least interesting. Okay. This chapter goes on for a while, but these are some of my favorite parts in that part, the chapter. That chapter was called World of the Fiction. And she goes on more um, about her sister and her mother and then this guy that she was, you know, obsessed with when she was younger. Okay. That was chapter one. I'm going to read part of chapter 16. Um, it's called Reading is a Nightmare. Um, I'm actually on this chapter. I just finished it. And it was really fucking good. Okay. Reading is a Nightmare, part one. On Wednesday, I go to San Francisco to read my book. I can do that anywhere. It's not location specific. But I'm alone, and when I'm alone, I travel in small ways in order to make things feel more exciting. Reading's what I do most of the time. So instead of doing something else entirely, I modify the environment in which I read. I don't stop reading. I like to spice it up. Throw new situations in for favor. Noise, crowd, woods, libraries, trains, rooms, cars, couch, bed. It makes the reading feel bigger than it is. Go further than it does. Bigger than the form of a book as object, or the book as subject. When I read, I look like a silent film star posing with my book. The book relies on me to express itself. Some people just don't look good holding a book, 
the way that some people look like fake smokers. I'm not a fan of realism, but Winona Ryder is a very funny smoker, though she really does smoke. In her movies, she always smokes and she always performs smoking as badly as she performs everything else, like intelligence, despair, longing, passion. Fake readers are a turn off, but real ones, the ones that look like they can't live without it, are sexy. I feel pretty justified in saying a version in saying my version of sexy isn't as trite as some other, more embellished version, since there's no aggressive promotional campaign behind trying to make people think that readers are sexy. Okay, and then um, this one, like, she puts in segments, like, one, two, three, and it all goes into, like, why reading is a nightmare. I'm trying to find out. Okay, right, this is part four. Um, I'm going to read this one. Two and three were really good, but uh, part four reminds me of myself because I do everything that she says in this, and I was so obsessed with it. Okay, part four. I like to read things over and over. Not an entire book, but parts of it. Hence what I'm doing. <laughs> some pages. And some sentences over and over. I underline passages with a black pen and try to imagine ways to include them in something else. My everyday life. Something I say to someone. Something I think while someone is saying something to me. Something I can inscribe into another book to give someone else. Something I can memorize and recite on special occasions. The way the poets used to. They perform their work or other people's work. The way that people who could play an instrument would play a waltz or chop in at a dinner party in a check in a checkbox story. Words were a skill, something you show off. People like to watch you say something. Sometimes I walk while I read, <laughs> or read while I walk. It makes me feel like I'm combining a daredevil sport with something geeky. That is, something physical with something physically but not mentally static. Or that, or that what I'm doing gives me so much pleasure I can't stop doing it. I don't want to. Not even to look where I'm going. Not even to see if I'm being looked at. I've only fallen once that way. Actual extreme sports are a problem because they're hot on the butt the biorhythms, though people never even think of them. Biorhythms are more important than just the mind, or just the body, or both. They're what make a roller coaster ride, or sailing on a ship stay in your body like a hangover for days, even after you've gotten off whatever you were on. You feel like you're on things when you're not. Biorhythms are the body's photograph. Okay. Um, I'm going to read part five. It's short. I thought it was funny. Okay, part five. This is what men sometimes say to me when they see me read in public. What's the matter with you? You're such a pretty girl. What are you doing reading all the time? Smile. You should smile. Why are you so serious? Are you depressed? You should be having fun, not reading. Don't read that book. But read my dick instead. <laughs> I can give you more to mull over than that book can. God, you look so serious. What's the matter with you? You should look where you're going, bitch. You should put that book away or you might get hit by a car. That one actually is not relatable, but <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> okay, I want to read more, but I'm not going to. Um, buy this. Semia Text put it out. I trust everything Semia Text puts out. Um, this is like 2007 it came out. Something new that Semia Text came out with is um, I'm So Into You. Um, it's really good. Check it out. Alright, good night.